Kate Ziegler grew up in Fairfax, Virginia. She went to Bishop O'Connell High School and George Mason University in Virginia and Chapman University in California. Kate is a two-time Olympic swimmer. She has won 15 medals in major international competition. She holds the world record in the 1500 meter freestyle. Kate has a strong devotion to the Eucharist and scriptures. She has overcome adversity and has become more disposed to the will of God. She spoke at the Vatican Conference on Church and Sport. She is courageous in her quest to overcome obstacles. She has great perseverance. Kate is the recipient of the 2013 Sports Faith Virtue of St. Paul Award. Thank you, Pat McCaskey and the whole McCaskey family, along with Sports Faith International. What an honor this is. You know, I look back as I, I already told you my story of kind of some ups and downs and both in my swimming career and in my faith journey. And I'm so thankful to be here today, to be surrounded by you all who have such a strong faith and being here has only strengthened mine. I'm really appreciative of a young girl named Emily Long who came into my life in 2007. She was a part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation and um, her wish was actually to watch me swim at World Championships. You get one wish as a Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> come watch me. <laughs> but nonetheless, that was her wish and her whole family was able to come to World Championships in Melbourne, Australia. After my first race, I didn't swim as well as I had wanted. I, I swam all right, but not quite as well as I wanted. And I, I prayed and I said, God, this girl has one wish. And, I, and she comes to all the way to Australia to watch me not do well. <laughs> You've got to do something. Well, after saying that prayer, I saw Emily shortly after my swim as well. And she came up to me and she said, you know, Kate, I, I, I wanted to apologize to her. And she said, you know, Kate, I don't care. Being here is enough. Being with you is enough. All your swims are like gold to me. And I thought about that and I thought, you know, that's just what God wants from us. Whatever we do, if we give it our all, if we trust in him and we put that faith in his plan, like I was saying before, that's enough. It's gold. And I am so grateful for the experiences I've had, for being here, for Emily inspiring me, and to be surrounded by people of faith like yourselves. And I don't have a gold medal, but that's gold enough for me. And I thank you so much for inspiring me. Thank you. You know, one of my very favorite scriptures is Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, and then you will call upon me. You'll come and you'll pray to me. I will listen. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's one of my favorite scriptures, and it's also one of the very first I ever memorized. You see, when I was younger, and even to today, my mom would always write on a little index card various scriptures for me to take with me on my travels. Remind me, ground me in my faith before my races, when I was anxious, when I couldn't sleep at night, when my heart was beating so fast before my races that I, I thought I might have a panic attack. But these scriptures grounded me. Now it's a great message and that's a great thing to do, but I look back on my journey and I think just how often did I really stop and truly trust in God's plan for me? And how often was my vision clouded by the desires of my own heart? You see, as any athlete, you I'm sure I understand, you wanna win, you wanna break records, you wanna get the medal hall, you wanna be the very best. And when your definition of success is not met, when the results don't meet your plan, how often do we say, God, where were you? What were you doing? How often are we selfish and we say, 
I'm really upset right now because I didn't get what I wanted. Well, oftentimes in our journeys, we don't get what we want. And our expectations aren't met. And we have surprises and stumbling blocks that we are faced with. You know, it's interesting. I look back. My journey in swimming certainly hasn't gone as planned. Um, I almost didn't even join the swim team because I was so terrified. I was six years old, going on seven, and my parents suggested, hey, Kate, why don't you join the swim team? You love the sport. You love the water. You can, you know, you'll make lots of friends. It would be a great thing for you to do over the summer. And I, being the timid, scared child that I was, I said, absolutely not. I might drown. I'm, the coach might be mean. I'm, no one's going to like me. I had 101 reasons why I couldn't do it. And they said, they encouraged me, and they said, you don't have to do it, but, but we'll encourage you. We really, we think you would enjoy it. We think you'd do great. And it was actually not until I was at the summer league pool one day, seeing the other kids on the team trying on the brand new swim team swimsuit. It was, give you a visual, it was red, blue, and black with fireworks on it. It was beautiful, beautiful thing in a seven-year-old, six, seven-year-old's eyes. Well, I begged my parents, can I please have this suit? Can I please, please, please? Just like we might beg God for all these things we want. Mom, Dad, can I please have the suit? And they said, no, you have to be a member of the team. That's the only way you get it. I said, you know, being the immature child, I'm sure I threw a little bit of a fit. Well, they finally caved and they said, okay, we'll make a deal with you. All you have to do is just go to the beginning of the swim team, beginning of the year banquet, meet the coach, five minutes, grab a hot dog, we'll be out of there. You get the suit. Because they knew as parents tend to know what's best for us. And they said they knew that if I just got there, just gave it a try, I would fall in love with it. And here I am standing in front of you, almost 20 years into my swimming career, still doing it. And the rest is history, as they say. Now, my rise to success was quite quick. And it was expected in my eyes. My plan was, well, I'm swimming faster and faster every year. I've had a lot of success. What's the, what's the end result? It's going to be going to the Olympics and it's going to be winning a gold medal. That's just what you do. Well, unless you're Michael Phelps, apparently <laughs> you get 20 of those, but for everyone else, it doesn't always happen that way. And that's what happened with me. In 2007, I was having the year of my life. I had won world championships in both my events. I had broken world records. I was on fire felt like I could do anything. But the tricky thing with success is that oftentimes with success comes expectations. Expectations of what others want you to do, think you can do, the media, my, my parents, my coaches, my friends, my teammates. All these expectations started weighing on me so profoundly. And by the end of 2007, going into 2008, preparing, preparing for the Olympics, I was miserable. I hated swimming. I wanted to quit, but what are you going to do? Five months out, six months out, I give up on a dream? Well, I didn't see that as an option. So I just put my head down, stared at that black line on the bottom of the pool, and kept on going. I made it to the Olympics in both my events, but wasn't able to enjoy the experience at all. And I left the Beijing Olympics after being a favorite in both my events to win gold, not even making it to finals. I was heartbroken, disappointed, embarrassed. I just failed in front of the whole entire world. And I was angry. I was angry at God because I felt like, hey, I've done everything right. I did everything you asked me. Why didn't you come through for me? Where were you? And so instead of calling out to him and asking him for guidance, I turned my back on him. And I figured, you know, he doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me. If he loved me, I would have a gold medal around my neck right now. Selfish, but true. And so for the next year or so, I kind of did my own things. I wasn't a bad kid, but I just, I wasn't, I wasn't professing my faith. I wasn't practicing I had a couple times friends asked me to go to church with them on campus, and I would go, but very much just go through the motions. Sure. Offer up a couple Hail Marys. My mom tried to encourage me, give me scriptures again, but I didn't, I didn't want to listen. 
It wasn't until 2010 when I moved to California, relocated teams and moved in with a host family temporarily who had a very strong Catholic background that I, I came back to my faith. And over the next two years leading up to the 2012 Olympics, I felt a new resolve, a new fire in my heart. I searched out for God, came through with that, with communication to him every day, pulled out my devotional, went to church, regardless of whether the family I was, I was living with made it or not, you know, I was, I was always there. And so when 2012 Olympic trials came around, I felt in a good place. It was a full 360 turnaround from the previous Olympics. I was inspired and I, I felt God's presence and I thought, this is it. I made the team, was so excited. Training camp was great in Tennessee and then France and then we traveled to London and it was just, it was incredible. Well, Olymp or I'll tell you this one thing, opening ceremonies, it was, I'm, I don't know if I've ever felt so close to God. You see, from the Olympic Village, we have about a three quarters of a mile walk to the stadium to get to the opening ceremonies. And the whole team was gathered together and I had three of my really good friends from the team who were also participating in a Bible study that we'd put together in the Olympic Village. And so we all, all together were walking to the stadium and as we got closer and closer, we could hear the hushed roar of the crowd, see the blue lights and the flashing lights of the photography and hearts are pounding and come through the, enter into the stadium and start chanting the whole team, USA, USA, USA. We have goosebumps. It's electric. Well, as we walk into the stadium, and they announce, welcome, the United States of America. Never have I had such a sense of pride, such a sense of God hugging me and saying, Kate, it's all going to be okay. Well, my friend Kathleen Hersey even grabbed my hand and we're jumping up and down like little five-year-olds on Christmas Day. She says, Kate, can't you feel him? I'm like, what? She, this is a God moment. You feel him. I absolutely did. And I thought... This is my moment. It's all going to be okay. Well, we don't always, again, plans don't always come the way we expect them to go. And I woke up the next morning with aches at the base of my spine and aches turned into chills. And I told myself, you will not get sick. <laughs> this doesn't happen. <laughs> Two times, it does not happen. Well, aches turn into a fever and a stomach bug and four days later after spending most of my time in bed splashing around in the water but not really eating I competed poorly completely disappointed didn't make finals again left London now heartbroken disappointed embarrassed and feeling now like a two-time Olympic failure well the one thing I can say from this is 2012, at least I had that strong faith behind me because this time I didn't turn my back on God. Instead, I called out to him and I was honest and I said, God, you walked on water, okay? <laughs> you parted seas. You raised from the dead. You could not just get me out of my bed and swim all right? Like, you couldn't have just made me healthy? Come on, come on. I'm not asking for much. But I was honest and I said, I'm angry and I'm lost and I am confused and I do not know what your plan is, but clearly we are not communicating because my plan does not match yours. <laughs> but I learned through these ups and these downs, even more from my disappointments and my successes, that the road is not always easy, but the road shapes us into who we are. You know, I, I got this email about a a story of a man who is God God calls out to him and he says um, I want you look outside and you see that big boulder I want you to push against that boulder day in day out you push as hard as you can being the obeyed it, obedient Catholic that he is okay I'll do it day after day month after month year after year he pushes and pushes and pushes well the boulder is not moving he is tired he retires every night, exhausted, thinking, oh, this is what God wants to do. Well, seeing that weakness, Satan comes and whispers in his ear, what are you doing? 
You're not making any progress. You're not going anywhere. This is impossible. He starts to think, oh, maybe it is. But he asks God, and he says, God, this seems impossible. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Clearly, something's going wrong. Clearly, I'm not listening. Clearly, something, our plans are not matching up. And he says, no. You did exactly as I asked. You were obedient. You listened. You pushed. And now look at yourself. You're so much stronger. You're so much more resilient. You have faith. God tests us. He puts boulders in our way. It's how we respond to those boulders. Do we keep pushing? Do we keep strengthening? Do we keep our resolve in our faith? Or do we give up, throw up our hands, throw up the white flag, and just run off? To something easier. Well, that's what Satan wants us to do, isn't it? But that's not what God asks. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God, just like my parents, when they suggested I join the swim team, and I thought that it was the worst idea I'd ever heard, and it was scary, and it was terrifying, and it was going to hurt, and people might be mean. God loves us. He loves me more than my parents can love me, and that's hard for me to believe, but he would never throw something in my way that I can't deal with. He would never harm me unless it was, it might hurt for a moment, you know. Certainly when I touched that wall and saw my time at the Olympics, it hurt. But it's shaping me into who I am today. The end result might not always be there as we expect it. But with God, it's all perfect. It all works out. The one last quote that I, scripture that I, I like. My mom gave this one to me as well. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. My prayer for all of you, especially you young people, my prayer for you is you hold steady in your faith with God. You trust in Him that He knows best. It is not easy. <laughs> I am a testament to that. It's not easy to trust in Him. But with Him, it's perfect. You can't go wrong with God on your side. Might not always get that gold medal. Might not always have that end result you expect. But at the end of the day, those disappointments, those difficult times are shaping you into the children of God that he wants you to be. The people who will change the world, who will impact, make a difference, and act out his plan. God loves us, and that's all we need regardless of medals. Thank you.